このために福島県内と埼玉県内の町民同士にわだかまりができてしまいました。And as a result of this, there was actually a gap created between those who were still remaining within the greater Fukushima prefecture area and those who evacuated to Saitama outside of Tokyo. And the reason for this is we had no access to communication to information to mobile phones. And so, how long did people stay? How many people were in this school? And what role did the government play? How has the government helped the refugees? So we were able to evacuate around 1,400 of the residents to Saitama Prefecture outside of Tokyo. So they were saved from the initial first exposure, the most serious exposure to radiation at the time, but many of them, unable to deal with this situation, gradually started to return to different parts of Fukushima Prefecture. You have not returned back to your town? Yes, I am still living in evacuation away from the heavily radiated areas. Can you talk about the Meetings that you have had with the government. You have a remarkable association of nuclear mayors in Japan. The mayors who live, who、uh, preside over towns that have nuclear power plants in them. From before the accident, we had always been strongly calling upon the government and also TEPCO to make sure that no accident was ever allowed to happen. And they were always telling us, don't worry, Mayor, no accident could ever happen. However, because this promise was betrayed, this is why I became anti nuclear. Um, I want to go to a clip uh, from uh, Atsushi Funahashi's new documentary film about the former residents of Futaba, where the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant is partly located.、Um, the film is called Nuclear Nation The Fukushima Refugees Story. And we're going to go to a part of the film that shows a part of this remarkable meeting of government officials with. The atomic mayors, the nuclear mayors of Japan. The future of energy production and Japanese energy policy is currently being debated. And this is something we've communicated to you regarding the details of this review. I believe it's important to clearly define the terms as soon as possible. Thank you very much. The industry minister leaves his seat in the first five minutes. The central and prefunctional governments are working on the annual health check guidelines based on what we've researched. Until now, the impact of radiation on children appears negligible. However, we will endeavor to keep you apprised of any developments. The nuclear crisis minister follows suit, citing official duties. And now, we'd like to open the floor for comments. Please raise your hands. I'm representing for two. I want to know why we're being made to feel this way. It's frustrating. What does the Nuclear Power Committee think? When you came and explained it to us, you lied, saying it was safe and secure. But we, who trusted and believed you, 
can no longer live in our own town. That last voice was the mayor at the time of Futaba, uh, Katsutaka Adugawa, who is with us today in our Tokyo studio. Uh, Futaba is where part of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant is located. He was speaking, addressing um, this meeting of government officials and nuclear mayors from around Japan in August of 2011. Uh, you just heard, oh, the voices of Goshi Hosono, who was the nuclear crisis minister of Japan, and Banri Kaieda, uh, minister of the economy, trade, and industry. And after each of them spoke, they politely took their leave of the room before the mayors could address them. So they did not hear the Futaba mayor's statement about the lies from the government. Talk about that particular meeting. Hi. This at the time, we were calling for a strong response and attention from the government since the disaster. However, they didn't even try to listen to what we were calling for. And they continued to not even try to make efforts to fulfill their responsibilities or promise to us. And so they continue to appear before us, those who are suffering directly from the disaster, but instead of listening to something which would maybe be difficult for their ears to hear, they would just leave the room, not even listen to us at all. And within those who were left in the room were some government officials, including some who were directly the ones who told me that no accident would ever happen. However, no matter what, I would try to appeal and say to them, it would not have any effect. So instead, I turned around and appealed and spoke to my, my colleagues, my fellow residents. And I tried to tell them what was really happening, the situation. Former Mayor Katsutaka Idogawa, you were a fierce proponent of nuclear power. You were pushing for two more reactors to be built even closer to Futaba than the others. You were proud of getting tens of millions of dollars for your town for hosting these reactors. How did you make your transition to being one of the most vocal government officials against all nuclear power? <laughs> I had been supporting the nuclear power plants in our town on the condition that no accident, no disaster would be allowed to occur. It was not necessarily that I was actually totally in favor of the nuclear power plants. However, the situation that was in place is without the nuclear power plants there, our city would be you know, losing the financial benefits and perhaps unable to go forward economically. The city was actually on the brink of bankruptcy beforehand. And and so in order to try and prevent the city from going into this kind of economic breakdown, I saw that building the new two reactors was perhaps the only way. I want to go to a clip, uh, another clip of Nuclear Nation that gives us a little background on the town of Futaba. Futaba's farming history goes back over a thousand years. In winter months, people had to leave town for work in the city. Reactors 5 and 6 came online in 1978 and 79. Money flowed in from the government, and the townspeople found themselves with lots of extra cash. They built roads, a library, a sprawling sports center, and made major upgrades to the infrastructure. 
nation talking about nuclear refugees, the nuclear refugees of Futaba. And we're joined by the former mayor who made the decision on his own right after the earthquake to move his entire town, to evacuate it uh, to Tokyo.